Okay, we have a question saying on the lecture 3.1, this 3.1. Is this the, the thing you're talking about, the slides? Chapter three. I don't think uh, you covered chapter three yet. If I'm not mistaken. No, he means the slides from Monday, 3.1. Oh, okay. So these classes, these slides. Okay, let's see if you have any, okay. So this is this is what you're asking about, car pointer. Okay. So you're asked to let's look. Where, where's account? Do you have account class here somewhere? Okay. You're asked to enhance functionality of account class so that it keeps bank accounts balance in addition to the name. Use data type double. Bank account number. Use data type long. Back account transaction date, use data type car pointer to represent the date of last 10 transactions. Okay, so uh, I'm not going to solve this, but I will discuss car pointer if you want and car array and the differences. Let's do it. Okay, so, so in C++, there's a difference when you store a uh, kind of string uh, or a uh, array of characters uh, inside a car pointer and uh, a car array. So let's just read here the differences and then we'll have more uh, discussion. So in here, they have two examples. They have two examples. They are storing the same string uh, in each uh, example one is an array one is a pointer so and, and the first one is an array of size 10 it has the term uh, geek stored inside of it a is an array we know that uh, size of a is 10 bytes because every character is one byte and it has a size of 10 bytes even if we're only storing uh, like four characters a and reference of a are same because when you're dealing with arrays, uh, the, uh, the variable is basically a reference to the first element in the array. Uh, geek is stored in stack section of memory, which we've discussed before, what is stack and what is heap. Uh, character A of 10 equal geek, A equal hello, invalid, A itself being an address and string consta constant is also an address, so not possible. So they're saying that we cannot do this. We cannot start with A being a array of 10 initialized to a geek and then say A is equal to hello. Uh, because A is basically an address. It's pointing to the first element uh, in the array and it's an address. So we cannot just uh, uh, like store inside an address uh, the word hello. A++ is invalid, so we cannot increment A++ or the array because it's, it's a reference to the first uh, element, but it's not uh, uh, like the type is character of it, of, of like of that array element. Uh, what we can do if we want to change the values of the array in this example, it's uh, we're starting same array size 10 equal to geek. We can access every element of the array just like we asked an array, A at zero is equal to B. Now we have changed, it became B instead of G after doing this. Now, if we use this car pointer P equal to geek, we're also storing uh, a string or a set of characters. However, in this case, P is a pointer variable. It is not an array of uh, 
uh, like P itself is not uh, an array of characters. It is a pointer, similar to how we've seen other pointers uh, last tutorial. The size of P now is four bytes uh, because this is on a, uh, like it, it might depend on the machine, the size of the pointer, but this is the size of the pointer. Like regardless of the size of the array you're storing uh, or being pointed to by this pointer, the size of the pointer will, uh, will still fix. So the size of P is equal to four bytes in this example. Uh, P itself and reference to P aren't the same. Like P is a pointer pointing to somewhere. And uh, the reference to pointer or the address of, uh, of P is not the same like we were seeing in the, like we were seeing in the array. Like uh, we know that in the array, the first element, if we're accessing the first element directly or, or the variable name, what we will get is a reference to the first element. So in this case, A and reference to A are the same. They will give us the reference to the first element of the array. In this case, the reference of a pointer is not the same as the pointer, so they're not the same. Now, uh, P is stored at stack, but geek is stored at code section of memory. So this is important because uh, like the, the array itself of, or the set of characters in your case are not stored in, in the stack memory. They are stored at the code section of the memory uh, that are separate to these uh, character uh, pointer arrays or ca character pointer uh, strings. Uh, and only P, the value of the pointer, is stored on the stack. Now, that means that if we do this, because P now is a pointer to an array, uh, so P equal India in this case is valid. Before we couldn't change the array, uh, like just by putting the variable equal to something, we cannot change it because we're having a reference to the first element of the array. In this case, we are pointing to whatever uh, being stored. So we can access it directly like this and we can change it, this is valid. Uh, incrementing the pointer is valid, which will basically increment the address of the memory. Uh, it doesn't mean that you will get to, to a place you want to, but it will increment the, um, the pointer of, like you have access to do that basically. And uh, in this case, uh, also accessing the first, like right now with car pointers, you're not dealing with an array directly. Uh, you cannot change the value of like the first element. Uh, a very important point here is that when you're dealing with car pointers, the the code section of the memory in which the array is stored or this, these characters are stored is constant or it's read only. Like it is stored in somewhere specific in the memory in which it is read only memory. So you cannot change them after you've, uh, you've created them basically. Uh, with car arrays, you can. You can access every element and change it as you want. They have more examples. Okay. So it's important to see an example now of the difference as a, as a member of the class between car pointer and car array. And you also have the third option, which is using the class string of the standard library C++. So I think this article is explaining the uh, difference between all three. Now, uh, it's important to know, by the way, when you're declaring like a card array, I know you're asking about pointers, but this is important. Like if you have, uh, you can initialize this like this, which is a car uh, str array, empty without specifying the size and just passing this, which will uh, automatically uh, modify the size to, uh, uh, to the size that you want based on the character test. Basically the compiler will detect that. 
uh, if you put a specific size and if the rest of uh, like if you what you're initializing with is larger or smaller than the size you have you will still end, end up with that size of the array at the end of the array what you will have is the end of character an uh, end of line uh, character uh, which will be stored as a last element in the array, which you will not see it here, but the compiler will add it. Okay, actually, this is an example of uh, of what the compiler will change this to. So you can see this is the uh, end of uh, like end of line character that will be added here. I'm not sure why he's asking you specifically to use car pointers. Because with, with character pointers, what you have is that like this is a pointer to a constant uh, string. Like after you create it, you cannot change the values inside of it. With uh, character arrays, you can change it. So let me read the question again. The user type card to represent the date of last 10 transactions. I'm not even sure what is being asked here. Anyone understands what we need to store inside this uh, string? The date of last 10 transactions. Yeah, I'm not sure what he wants to uh, to store exactly. Like we'll have to read more context, but let's just uh, uh, store some character pointer here. So our pointer uh, value. Let's just call it value. And let's say inside the constructor. So this is I'm using number here, but like this is just an example class that we just created. So we're just going to go with it. Uh, let's say inside the constructor, we're also passing. Uh, or pointer. If I do this here, if I do, uh, so do you guys know what is the initializer list? This initialization list? I believe it was covered in your slides. I think an error here, but I don't understand why. I cannot convert from.
Okay, so I think it's uh, like the, the, it depends on some compilers. So we cannot do this in on Visual Studio, frankly, because this is a constant uh, like value, and then here, actually, we we saw that already. Although they have been doing it as an example before, like we cannot finish, we cannot store something inside this call pointer because it will be constant. Uh, what they're suggesting that we can do this. Uh, or let's call it temp. And then assign. So this should work, I believe. Try to output. Okay, so we can output the uh, test here. Uh, if I change the value of, uh, let's say, temp at zero equal to uh, e. Let's output test again. Can we do that? Okay. So in this case, like I have a array of characters saying this, and then I have a car pointer uh, that is basically pointing to uh, the first element of this array. Like I, I cannot modify car pointer directly. I, like this test, I cannot modify it directly. I shouldn't be able to do this. Or maybe I can. Okay, I'm even allowed to do this. This is weird. Uh, the problem is that some are coming from C and come, some are coming from C++, so things can get uh, mixed up between the guidelines. Okay, this should fix the problem probably in individual studio. Okay, that was the problem. So before I was doing this, uh, this should give us a problem, yeah? So it's saying that uh, a constant car pointer cannot be used to initialize an entity of type car pointer. So because this is, this is now declared as constant. Uh, so it has to be constant car pointer for it to be able to initialize it this way which I'm assuming on some compilers, it will not give this problem. It will allow us to do it. So if I, if I access like some element in, uh, like if I try to change it, this will give an error. It does. Expression, expression must be modifiable L value. It is not modifiable because it's constant. Now, if, if we want to, Uh, if you want to use car pointers directly, like uh, you can maybe do, I don't know if, if he wants, like he, he's allowing to do this, but this can work. Like if car pointers, like it's a pointer to a character basically. So uh, in, in this case, like this specific example, what we're doing is that we're creating a new character array of size 10 in this case. And we are storing some, like after that you have a pointer, uh, we have a pointer pointing to this array. So we can, we can change things. Like we can, we can access it and we can change things. This is different than the constant car pointer that I was talking about. This is really just a pointer in which we have uh, things pointed to an array. And like we can, I think this is what he's asking for. But be careful, when you do that in a class, you have to uh, destroy it afterwards. I've seen, an, probably I've seen an example of that in one of the slides. OK. 
okay, this is the example I'm talking about. So th this is exactly what he's asking for, like in terms of storing things and data type of core pointer. So in here, he's storing the uh, uh, first name and last name in the type of a character pointer. And inside the constructor, he's creating a new uh, array that is being pointed to by this pointer. And he's taking the size of whatever array you're passing using str length, which is a, uh, a function in the standard library of the, like, coming from the C library. Uh, he's adding a one because uh, uh, like you should add the one usually because this will not give you the full string including the character like end of line character uh, so he's inside the constructor he's creating the array of the size that you want and he's storing the information inside of the array here using str copy so str copy will basically copy the values from this uh, car pointer uh, uh, characters to this or like actually from this one to the f name and from uh, PL to L name after you've uh, initialized the, this, the right size for it and you've allocated memory for it on the heap. So uh, in the destructor, this is very important. In the destructor, now you have to delete that memory because you've, you've constructed, like you've allocated memory in the cons at the constructor level for this character, uh, for this character array. You have to delete, you have to clean up the memory. For the copy constructor, it's also important, similar to how we discussed last time, shallow copy and deep copy, because right now you have a pointer pointing to an array of characters. Uh, what you have to do here is also go to that uh, uh, pointer and get the information and then uh, make a new, uh, allocate a new memory for it and copy it, which he's doing right here. So this example, like you should look into it and see uh, uh, classes two, like it's 3.2, I think, and on, on Moodle, in which he gives an example of how to use character pointer to uh, store information instead of using it like as, as a string. Okay, let me just uh, give a note about what I was saying about the uh, car pointer arrays that are stored somewhere else in memory. This is not stored somewhere else in memory. This is just allocated on the heap. But if you're doing constant character pointer, now this part here, this, this, this array is going to be stored somewhere specific in the memory in which it is, uh, it is read only memory. And it is also accessible faster than other memory. Or, I mean, that's maybe, uh, a big statement to make, but it's, it can be more efficient. So this right here will be stored somewhere specific in the memory, not on the stack and not on the heap. Uh, it's like read only memory for these constant uh, strings. So if you have some sort of constant string, uh, it's better to do it this way. Okay, did I answer your question? Okay. Now, for me, I would, like, if you don't necessarily have to deal with, uh, like, if you don't have, you really have a reason to do this, like a really, really strong reason to do this, other than practicing, in this case, which I believe the professor is doing here, like, to give you, to allow you to practice, because this will give you good practice on pointers. Uh, other than practicing, and in this specific case, like I would use the C++ standard library string because you don't have to worry about memory in that case. It is uh, automatically allocated for you and it's automatically destroyed for you and is contained within that object of uh, class string. So I, I would personally use the string class. And we can also access it uh, like an array. So actually, my string at uh, character one equal. So I'm changing a specific character in the array, and I can print the whole thing or print a specific character. 
I changed the first the second the first character zero one is to T. And there's also a lot of uh, built-in functions that you can uh, uh, use. Like uh, you can read the documentation if you want. So you can look at all the. Uh, We can look at the functions from the string class. So some of the functions, for example, STOI, which is convert string to integer. It's a function, these are function templates. Uh, you can convert numerical value to string, to string, if you have a numerical value. In the documentation, you can access each one separately and look at it. This is, this is a function template part of the standard library, for example. Uh, which takes like from here, from the template, you can read the, the declarations of uh, like, or the prototype if you want of the function. So the first one is saying it takes a, a, an object of uh, string by constant reference. Uh, it takes the size pointer, which is by default zero. And it takes the base in which, like this is the number base, like base 10 is the decimal numbers that we know of or uh, like base eight, uh, octa, or mm -hmm. stuff like that. Uh, okay, so do you guys have any other questions? I wanted to do a like example of uh, header files and CP files just to uh, like reinforce that idea for everyone. Okay, I'm gonna delete this uh, class here. Okay, so I'm gonna stick with, with Visual Studio because uh, last time I've seen multiple people ask for this. If you guys want me to use any other IDE in the future uh, tutorials, like, let me know. Uh, I have uh, Xcode, I have CLion. Uh, I think those are the only IDEs for C++ that I have. Okay, so let's call this person. Let's say we're doing a class for person and uh, we're gonna start with the header file. So this is person.h. Uh, first thing in every uh, header file, uh, you have to do either pragma once or if not diff and uh, specify this. So. We discussed last time why we need these. Anyone have any question about this? Okay. So let's say we have a class of person. Uh, for uh, the class, we're going to have private members and public members. Usually you will see as like as a practice, they put the private members at the end and public on top. Uh, let's start with the private members. Let's say we have a string. Or name. And uh, whatever string also. Or uh, number okay now for public we can have a default constructor now if, if you're not doing much in the constructor and you're using the initializer list you can put it inside the uh, like header file you, you will see it a lot being done in the header file so in here like the initializing list would be this one uh, where we are not declaring things like we are we are initializing the members before we actually call the constructor. So these, like, if, if we do, let me just walk you through a simple example. So in here, as, as a person here, I'm constructing the class. Uh, let's say I'm putting name equal to uh, empty and uh, then uh, phone also equal to empty or some uh, value. Okay. 
what's happening here is that when I construct a class, uh, an object of person, uh, at the moment we reach this point where the uh, execution is calling the constructor, those two object strings are being cons are, are constructed already. So the default constructor of uh, string for name and phone has been called already. And then I start initializing them, which means that it will replace whatever we've initialized before by using the default constructor. And uh, some new value now for that string will take place. However, if I use the initializer list, uh, so name, let's say put it empty, and phone, let's put it empty. And we will remove these from within the constructor uh, call. What the difference here is that at this point, at here, when, when we start calling the uh, execution of the constructor, those two strings have been constructed, but using the regular constructor by taking whatever we pass here, or actually the copy constructor. So what we have here now, uh, like we did not construct the new object. We did not construct a, a string object and then uh, made a copy of it. We initialize it directly. And then we, the, basically the constructor didn't do anything in this case because the values have been initialized before the constructor uh, starts, con like makes a call to the constructor function. Uh, this makes things more efficient. It allows the compiler to make uh, much more optimizations. Uh, like you, you may be still not familiar with this, but uh, C++ is very well known for the powerful compilers and the optimizations it can do. Uh, maybe I can show you an example. So this is something called the uh, Compiler Explorer. Uh, you can pick the different C++ compilers that you want to use. And in here, you can pass some parameters to the compiler. Uh, right now, I'm passing, in this example, is passing two parameters, which the first one is for the optimization level. There are three optimization levels in general for C++, like for the CLang compiler, the GCC compiler. They have three levels of uh, optimization. And this is a flag saying that uh, I don't want exceptions. So you don't know what exceptions yet, but later throughout this course, you will learn about exceptions. However, uh, I wanna show you like a simple example. We have here a, a, a class struct uh, test. Okay, by the way, anyone knows the difference between struct and class? Anyone have any idea? Okay. So in, in C++, struct is different than uh, struct in C. In C++, struct and class are exactly the same, except for one small difference in which all the members are by default public. In a class, all the members are by default private. So if we want, like if we just did not define if it's private or public, in a struct, they will be automatically public and in a class they will be automatically private. This is the only difference in C++ between struct and class. However, in C, in C you don't have classes. Uh, struct in C is basically like a, like a collection of, uh, of stuff, like it's just a collection of data. We don't have object or it's not an object oriented language to C. So you would just use it to store different uh, uh, datas inside the struct. There's no members to uh, extract like function members or there's no constructors even like stuff like that. Uh, but forget C for now. Like in C++ when you read struct, it's very like it's almost the same as C++ except that uh, for class except that things are by default public. So in this case, this constructor is public and this member string is also public. Now this is a simple struct here or class. It's called test. Uh, it has a constructor which is initializing a string. This x underscore is a string. It's initializing it within the, uh, the constructor. I'm gonna change this to making it uh, as part of the initializer list. This, uh, this website like compiles things on runtime and you can see the 
uh, the binary being executed based on that specific compiler. Okay, so we can see that how, how the code just changed the amount of uh, like binary that was generated. Let me take you a step back. So this is, this is how we were initializing this object test, like the value of string. Using inside the constructor, we were initializing string uh, with the hello. And this is the binary behind it. We can see that hello was stored in some sort of memory inside the binary. And if you go deeper into the assembly, you will see that uh, we are moving things. So if I uh, like highlight this, somewhere here we are making a move of the value of hello to the uh, uh, value of this object and so on. If I go back to the initializing, like initialize things by this list, we just ignored a lot of code. So the compiler was able to do a lot of optimization here and remove a lot of things. Uh, this is of course because I have level three optimization. If I change the level of the, the, of the level of optimization, uh, things now will change. There's a lot of things being called, and uh, which is basically what we think is already being called. Like when you write your program, uh, this is like optimization at level zero is what you're assuming what's happening. But usually compilers are much smart, like very smart, and they will remove things that we don't need. If anyone like observed here this is our main function call and what it's doing is absolutely nothing like this this is the whole function call it's, it's nothing it's not doing anything anyone can guess why we're our our main function is is empty although we are actually constructing an object inside main but in the generated binary or assembly the main function is doing absolutely nothing Anyone want to have a guess? Like, th think about what what uh, the the main function that we've implemented uh, do for the like in general. Did it did it have any effect on anything? Is it the same if we have this test or if we don't have this test in terms of the behavior of the program? Our program will behave exactly the same if we have test object here or if we don't have test object here. Even the compiled version is exactly the same. Like the compiler at level three optimization was able to see that this object here is not being used anywhere. So why have it? Why, why waste time and construct it? So it, it removed it. If we go to optimization level zero, uh, it's actually doing everything. Like we have here the constructor of test, uh, we have the destructor of test, uh, we have the main function in which it is actually creating a test, calling the constructor and uh, calling the destructor afterwards when it's uh, destroying everything and so on. I'm not sure why we're talking about optimization here, but uh, like just keep in mind that this is one of the powers of C++, like why C++ is used for like computationally expensive uh, applications and stuff like that, uh, because of the power of the compiler. It can do like some really crazy optimizations to your code. Uh, if we go back here, like look at this main function, it was doing absolutely nothing. But if I change a simple, simple thing in which I am printing something out, like right now, I added a function to the class test. Uh, the main function is still doing nothing. But if I make a call to print, now everything changes. Because now there is actually a behavior behind these lines of code that uh, the compiler cannot just take out. Like this is now our uh, program, which is still much smaller than what it would be if it was zero optimization. Like at zero optimization, now we have a very like a much longer program. Uh, now we're calling multiple functions in the uh, main function. Instead of that, this is our uh, optimization code for this simple program. 
you can notice that we don't have inside this optimized version there's no class test and there's no constructor and there's no destructor like if, if you if you go back to no optimization like it actually defined functions in the assembly that was generated for the construction of the class for print and for destructing the, the object and it's making those calls from the main function right here it's making the call for the constructor and then for the print function and then for the destructor but if we look at optimization at level three it actually removed all of those and it's like it's kind of hard coded the behavior inside the main function directly so we're only like in here you don't see a function print anymore but it is moving things directly to the C out in this case. Anyway, I forgot what, what got us into this. Yeah, I was talking about the initializer list. So initializer list can help us, like can help the compiler uh, optimize things much better. Like if, uh, if we change this from using, initializing this string from uh, the initializer list to uh, inside the constructor, a lot of things like mo more, like there's more work is, that is happening here uh, because before the constructor gets called, everything inside the object needs to be constructed already. So this string will have to be constructed before we start the call of this, this the body of this constructor. So it will construct this string first and then we will start replacing it with this value. Before the compiler was able to just initialize that string directly with the value uh, from the initializing initializer list. Okay, so going back to this class, we have inside the header file, uh, the constructor to person. Uh, it does nothing. Uh, we can have a default, uh, a regular constructor. We will also use the list to initialize these values. So uh, name, name, phone, phone. So because we're using the list, we are able to use the same names of uh, like what we are passing as a parameter and our actual members. If, if I'm not using the list here, let's say I want to initialize name directly here. What is happening right now, right here? This name is which and this name is what? Let's, let's add a function here, print. Okay, let's uh, make it part of the header file. And then we will go to the CVP file. We will add a new file. person.cp, uh, first thing we will do, we will include uh, person.h, and then we will uh, define, so in here we declared the function called print. Okay, we have to include the string. Okay. So in here, we declared the function print as a member, as a public member of class person, but we haven't defined what print does. So going to the CUP file, we will specify uh, this function is uh, from the scope of person class, and it is called print. Now, one thing you should practice doing, because it has a lot of advantages, uh, especially later in inheritance and even the optimization that the compiler will do. If your function is not uh, changing anything in your class, you should declare it as constant. So this should be a constant function. Now this function, okay, so this function now is a constant function, which means it, it's not allowed to change any values 
uh, of the of the class of the object it can only uh, read so also i will have here a constant and inside this function i will do uh, we have to include ios stream let's uh, print the name and the uh, what was it the phone Okay, so now we have a print function for person. Uh, we've declared print here and we've defined it in the CP file. In C and in Visual Studio, like you can have a uh, peak definition, for example, it will show you the definition like as a peak of this function. These like shortcuts help a lot when you want to remember what this function does or something. Uh, in general, if you're using a uh, like in many cases, you don't have access to the definition. So like, like right here, I'm saying for the string library, peak the definition. I actually just have the, like the prototype kind of thing. Uh, and and when, you're, when you're dealing with, by, with libraries, uh, they will only give you the header files because that's what you need to link uh, to their library. So they will give you the uh, binary build of the library. Like they will compile the library and will give you the binary build and they will give you the list of header files and you will add all these like to your uh, settings of the uh, like uh, IDE to link to this library so what the client will have access to is your header files your your structure behind uh, the code they will not uh, like unless you give them access to it and you're open sourcing your code they they will not get access to the implementation behind the code and most of the time they shouldn't even like uh, in many cases, how you are implementing something changes. Like especially if you're using a library, there's a lot of people uh, maintaining it and stuff like that. How you are implementing a specific method uh, can change. So the client that is using the library should not necessarily uh, be dealing with, like be using that function for a specific reason of how it is implemented. They should only be using it for the behavior of that function. So in the documentation behind that function, you should read what this function requires as parameters and what it will return, like what it will calculate or something like that. And that's the, the information that the client should be using to use a function. So, and this is an important thing about using header files and CP files, because if you put everything in your header files, like last time we discussed the point in which it makes compiling more efficient using CP files. Uh, but also, if you put everything in the header files, now you're giving every, like, access to everything to whoever is going to use your library. Because header files are not compiled to, like, like what gets compiled as a library package is the CP files. And the header files are used to link everything together. Anyway, so in here what we did, we have the regular constructor. It's taking two strings as parameters. And inside the constructor, the, 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 the parameter is called name in this case. And I'm saying name is equal to name. So what I assume should happen is that uh, this name will be the name of my member, like my member class of the object. And this name will be the one I'm passing to the parameter. However, like how would the compiler know the difference? So if we want to test this right now, so we can uh, include the person then create a person object and we can use the default constant, the regular constructor. So I'm calling the regular constructor, which we can take the definition. No, we can. Okay, it is this one right here which is exactly what we just described. It's using name equal name. Uh, and now I'm going to print from person. Let's see what was stored inside name. So nothing was stored inside name. The string, when you uh, use default constructor, it will be an empty string. The reason behind that is because in here, this name 
is the parameter name. And it's not the name of the member of my class. Uh, when you're dealing with the scopes in C++, the uh, a variable name will take will be basically the closest param like the closest variable name with that like closest variable with that name to your scope. So within this scope of this constructor, what is the closest variable uh, that is called name? It is this one here, which is the parameter of our class. If you want to access the name, which is the uh, the member of our our object we can use the this keyword. So anyone know what is this keyword? So uh, this basically is a pointer that points to uh, the object you are in right now. So in this case, it will be pointing to the object of this person class that we are accessing. So if, and because it's a pointer, we have to use these arrows to uh, access the members of it. So now I'm the, I'm saying uh, this name. So the name, the member name of this object, is equal to name, which is this uh, parameter right here. So this way we are specifying which name I want here. I want the member of this object, and the just if you just use the name, uh, the variable name, then it will be uh, dealing with the parameter name and not the member, because this is the closest scope to it. If I run our simple program again, it should now initialize name. So now I can see the output of, uh, of the string. The phone is still empty because we're not initializing it. Anyway, if you're using the initializer list, you don't have to specify these details because uh, it will, no, like for, for the initializer list, this name, has to be a member because we're initializing a member. And this phone also has to be a member because we are initializing a member of the class. And whatever is inside here will be uh, not the member, but the closest of the, uh, in the scope. So this will work just fine. Run again. And now we are initializing the name and the phone. Any questions so far? Like I, I, I think we can uh, I just leave the rest of the tutorial for questions if you have any. The next tutorials we will be discussing like discussing new topics, but so far you haven't uh, like I'm trying to uh, discuss the topics I saw on the slides. So if I miss anything or you want me to explain something, just let me know, please. If you are facing problems understanding a specific concept with constructors and stuff, like just do like we did last tutorial in which you start outputting things. Uh, default constructor. Uh, implement the default constructor, the regular constructor, the destructor, the copy constructor, and just start running things and see which one is being called just to understand the concepts more. Uh, so this is the default constructor. I will not see an output because we're using the regular constructor. Actually, I have a build fail. C out undeclared identifier. Okay, I have to include uh, iOS stream, which has the uh, C out. Okay, uh, if we uh, specify here regular constructor. I can see that the regular constructor was called. So do you guys have any questions related to header files and CVP files? This is the header file for person class, and this is the CVP files for person class. 
if we add more uh, like functions here, uh, actually let's add the getters and setters. So uh, usually in, in every class you would implement you, if, 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 you're, if you want the client to have access to these members and they are private members, you should implement the getters, which is like get name. Uh, and uh, remember that getters have to be constant. Uh, so get name and you would implement it as return basically name. Okay, I'm not sure why I said it's, it's void, it's not void, it's a string. So the return type has to be the same type of whatever you're returning. Uh, I might be able to generate, I, I don't know if it's in this version of Visual Studio or uh, the one that is paid, but like you can generate a few things automatically. No, the only thing I see here is generate documentation code. Okay, forget about it. Okay, so the second one is also string. Uh, get phone. Turn phone, and these are the getters in which we use to get the values of the uh, private members. If we want to allow the user to uh, modify those private members, we can also implement uh, setters. Uh, they will have the return type of void, and uh, like set name, and uh, it will take a string. We can do like name equal new name. Void set the phone. Now here's a like a related to the question that I was asked, like how do you use uh, character pointers? So remember when you're when you were dealing with character pointers, you had to uh, like initial, like uh, allocate memory for that character pointer yourself. Let's go to that example. Okay, in here when we did the construction, we allocated the memory uh, onto the heap of a character array with this size. And then we made a copy of the values. Uh, when we did a copy, when we did a copy of the object, we did the same thing for the new object. Allocated the size, uh, allocated new memory on the size, and then we made a copy. Uh, when we are destroying this, we had to free the memory. Now, here's the thing: if we are building a setter like here, like in, in our implementation, we had the set name, we pass a new string. And we've created, uh, like we just assigned it to a name. Basically, the, the destructor of string has been called right now. And uh, uh, it automatically deleted, freed that memory. And then a new object of name was made a copy here. Because when you are doing assignment here, it, it's made a call to the copy constructor. And that new copy was stored in name. But if we do that inside the character pointer, uh, what will happen is that, like what we're dealing with a pointer basically, we're not dealing with the memory directly. So if we want to implement a setter right here, what we will need to do is, we will first need to free the memory of whatever name has right now. Like let's say this F name, we're writing a, a set function for it. So someone can uh, pass a new value and change it. The first thing we will need to do is to free this memory that we have allocated like uh, unless the unless the size of the new string is exactly the same as the size of the previous string, uh, what we can do is just change the values. We can access the array directly and make a copy of the elements of the array to that element of, our, of the array, and make a copy of everything. And now we have things working. But if the name has different size, now things are bad. Uh, what we need to do is that we will need to free this memory, similar to how we're freeing it here. We need to do delete f name. And then we will need to create a new memory for it, new character uh, array with the new size of the name, like basically similar to here, with the new size of the name that we want to set. And then we need to make a copy of it to save the new name. 
So all of these would go into your set functions. It will not be as simple as assigning something to another thing. Do you guys want us to implement this, what I just said? Okay, someone said yes. So let's change this implementation here. Instead of using string, let's use character pointer. Or let's keep everything and just use character pointer for, uh, I don't know, country. Now inside the constructor, um, Okay, let's do the default constructor. So let's say we're passing also character pointer. So actually inside the initializing list, we can, uh, we're not gonna do it inside the initializing list because there's multiple steps we need to do here. So first thing we will do is allocate a new memory for it. We have the, our member called uh, country. So country will be equal to new character array of size Let's do uh, length of a string and pass uh, country, the, the one that we're passing as a parameter. And now we've allocated a new uh, array at the, uh, on, at the heap of this size, which is pointed to by this country pointer. And now we can make a copy of everything. So uh, if you look at the uh, uh, this prototype of the function is telling me that the first parameter is called destination and the second parameter is called source. So my destination is country, which is my member, and the source is uh, what was passed as parameter. I'm going to modify the print function. Make sure whenever you're implementing something that you're testing at every little step because uh, things can go wrong very easily and you will not notice until it's too late and then you will not know what's what the hell's going on so let's print country here okay we need to add the third uh, so let's create country, say, Canada. Uh, and in here, we're going to pass uh, the address of this, which is being passed right now. So because like, this should work, let's run it and find out. No. Okay, we're getting an error from uh, Visual Studio saying that str copy might be unsafe. Consider using str underscore s instead. So if you're using Visual Studio, you might get the same error. Uh, there is a way to uh, remove these errors but let's use uh, str copy underscore s and see what happens it is not character pointer and character pointer
I think we need to include some file. Defined and header string.h. Okay, so let's include string.h. String. Any files that you include that are ending with, with .h, uh, they are different than the C++ standard. Like they are part of the library, but these are coming from the C library. Whatever you see something ending with h, like is also like uh, math.h, for example. It's different than uh, other, like the, you might have, like in, in the example of string, we have string, which is not ending with dot h, which is the C++ standard library. This is coming from the C library, which has functionalities for strings, uh, for character like style uh, strings. Okay, so str underscore c is, takes the second parameter as constant. I'm not sure why, like Visual Studio is asking us to do all of those things, but let's fix it. So let's pass this as a constant car. It's fixed. Also not. Hey, did anyone try running this uh, sample code that was given on Visual Studio and got the same error for str copy? Because I think in my case, what I will do is disable it. Okay, so let's use the second. So destination is uh, country. Now it's the size in bytes. So I'm guessing we can put the uh, Okay, similar to how we did here. This is the size in bytes. And the third parameter is the source, which is what we passed. So maybe this will work. Will this compile? Okay, it's working. Canada. Okay, so guys, if you're using Visual Studio, str copy will give you an error saying it's uh, unsafe, which is, uh, it is unsafe. I mean, Visual Studio is not allowing us to use it, but uh, in other compilers, you will be able to use it. And you can override this in Visual Studio. However, it is probably safer to use str copy underscore s. Uh, you pass the, uh, uh, the destination you want to make the copy to. You pass the size of the array in bytes, which is really the length in this case because every character is one byte, so just the count plus one uh, is going to be the size, and then the source of your information that you want to copy. So anyway, this is our regular constructor now. We are passing a character pointer. Um, we, are initial, we are allocating memory to our country uh, member, which is also a character pointer. is also a character pointer. And then we are making a copy from country, uh, like to country, which is our member, uh, from this uh, parameter that we're passing here. Anyway, last thing we will do is build a, uh, actually, 
it's very important. We need a destructor because we're allocating memory. We need to free it. So uh, freeing this memory, delete. Uh, in this case, what did we call it? Country. Delete the country. Similar to how we're freeing the memory here. Okay, let's implement the set. Set country. What it will take is a character pointer. And this is what we're going to do here. Uh, first thing. So actually, if you want, we can. Uh, so let, let, let's define a very general one, which will just make a new memory every time. So here's what we will do. We will delete country. We're going to free the memory we have already. We're going to uh, allocate a new memory. New, similar to how we did here exactly. So let me just copy this part and paste it. Because that's exactly what we want to do again. Like we want to, uh, uh, free the previous memory and just create new memory and store it. So the first line, we are deleting the previous memory we have. Uh, now we are allocating new memory with the new size of whatever we're passing here. And we're making a copy afterwards of the memory uh, country from whatever we're passing. So uh, if I go to the main function, I print here and then I use person dot set country and we pass like another country then we print again we have it fail okay because this is not a okay this is cannot convert car okay we have to do it similar to how we did before Okay, so it made it deleted the previous uh, thing, and uh, let's let's store this uh, previous thing and see if we can check that it was actually deleted. Like in here, we have a pointer set called country. So if I do uh, if I do car pointer get country. I'm returning this pointer right now. So let me get access to this pointer. In here, I'm going to store this pointer first. And then I'm going to set the, con the new country to whatever uh, we're adding here. And I'm going to try to print this value here. Let's see what it, what would it output. Would it output Canada or what? Let's find out. Okay, it still outputs Canada, although we deleted it. Which is interesting. So although we deleted the memory, yeah, although we deleted the memory, it is still stored in the memory somehow, uh, which is which is okay. Like we know that delete by deleting the memory, it doesn't mean that it was actually changed in the memory. So C++ allow us to access memory uh, because we still have the same address. Like we stored the address and we access it again. Uh, that's why we saw the same value that was stored before. But it doesn't mean that it will always be there. Like if, uh, because it's instantly being used right now, 
the operating system did not, or the program did not uh, use that memory again. But with more complex programs, like, of course, you shouldn't assume that the memory will stay there. Uh, and sometimes you might not even have access to it anymore. Like you might access it again, even if you stored this and you've had access to it before, you might not have access anymore. Okay, any questions before we sign the attendance, which I know you're all waiting for? If you have any questions, let me know now.